الحمد لله الحمد لله نستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعه من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعص الله ورسوله فانما يذهب الى نفسه ولا يذكر الله شيئا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد نبيك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات وبارك على محمد وزوجه وذريته وقال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم وقال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد قل بفضل الله وبرحمته فلذلك فليفرحوا وهو خير مما يجمعون صدق الله العظيم وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الصوم جنة ما لم يخرقها أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Respect your listeners One of the great scholars by his predecessors, Mujaddid al-Thani rahmatullahi would say that if you compare the blessings of the 11 months of the year and compare them to the blessings of the month of Ramadan, the entire blessings of the 11 months are just like a drop in the ocean compared to the blessings of the month of Ramadan. What a month, what a month Allah is about to bless us. Fishes in the oceans making dua for us, said Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Maybe Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala sends some signals from the fasting people to the fishes, like the cell phone sends signals, wireless devices. Birds making dua, said Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the animals seeking forgiveness for the fasting people, Jannah being decorated. Shayateen being chained, the gates of Jannah being flung open, the gates of hellfire being closed, angels saying Amin to the du'as of the fasting people, floodgates of rewards and mercy and forgiveness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is opening up in the month of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not asking any price for this mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only looking excuses for the forgiveness of his servants in the month of Ramadan. That is why Angel Jibir made the dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Prophet said, Ameen. Imagine the dua of the Archangel Jibir and Amin said by the most beloved creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jibreel said, oh, let that be person be cursed who has been blessed the month of Ramadan and yet he or she is not forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When each virtuous deed is equal to a fourth, said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and each part of obligatory act is multiplied by 70 times, said Prophet Sallallahu What rewards us like your listeners? A person, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will free a person from the fire of Jahannam, and Allah will forgive that person who breaks another person with his or her fast. Without the reward of the fasting person being diminished or decreased in any way, said Prophet The companion said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, what if you do not have anything to give to the fasting person to break the fast? Prophet said, even if you give a single date, or a glass of water, or a sip of milk, you will get, you will get the same reward as the reward of the fasting person. أَوَّلَهُ رَحْمَةً وَأَوْسَتَهُ مَغْفِرَةً وَآخِرَهُ يَتْقُمْ مِنَ النَّارِ أو كما قال Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said 
The first part of this brings special mercy of Allah. The second part brings the forgiveness of Allah. The third part brings the freedom from the fire of Jahannam. One mantra said to this is make the word golden opportunity was just coined for the month of Ramadan. For the awesome mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala releases in the month of Ramadan. If we do not take advantage of this mantra, certain listeners, of such a month, never given to the nations before Prophet Tarawih, never given to the nations that we became before Prophet Such rewards never given to the nations that came before Prophet if we do not take advantage of this month, if we do not exert ourselves, if our life is just the same status quo like it is in the remaining 11 months, sleep when we want to sleep, <coughs> taking rest when we want to rest, doing other worldly things when we want to do, rather than when Allah has given us some free time to exert His Ayin Quran, to turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did three things in the month of Ramadan. Even though his worship was such in the regular months, where his feet would swell up because of long standing in the Salah, he would increase his worship in the month of Ramadan even more. He would increase his charity in the month of Ramadan, even though his charity were it was at its peak in the remainder of the months. He would increase his charity, he would become like a wing that would benefit everyone in the month of Ramadan. Number three, he would beg Allah for forgiveness. Even though he was forgiven past, present, and future, but he would increase his begging of forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the month of Ramadan. Doing aitikaf in the month of Ramadan. Ever since the revelation came of the month of Ramadan, Rasulullah would do aitikaf every year of the month of Ramadan that would come in his life. Except the last year we did aitikaf twice before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called him back. We should also make intentions for such a business. You know when a poor person knocks on the door of a rich person, after some time the rich person eventually opens up the door. Imagine the king of the kings, you're knocking on the door of the king of the Sabeeds. In between the verses of Ramadan, in the Quran, Allah says, when the servants ask about me, tell them I'm near. When they make dua, I will respond. I will answer to the duas. Rasulullah said, Do not ever get discouraged when you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not become despondent. I make so many duas, my duas are not, do not get accepted. I do not see the results of the duas in my life. Why should I make to us? We should never get the feeling. Because Prophet said one of the three things happen when a person makes dua. Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the dua. Of course, Allah accepts all the duas. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him what he or she has asked for immediately or after some time. Number one. Number two, Prophet said in the hadith of Imam Muslim Rahmatullah. Number two, Prophet said, when a person makes a dua, whatever need he or she had, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of the dua, a calamity, an affliction, a test, a trial that was coming his or her way, it could be in the form of sickness or accident or losing the job, business, or whatever is related to his life or family's life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes the affliction from his or her life. Because of certain du'as he had made, even though the removal of affliction is not linked to the particular du'as he or she made, but Allah removes the calamities and afflictions from his or her way. Number two. Number three, Prophet wasallam said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deposit his or her du'a for the day of judgment. When the person is standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no translator in between him or and her or her, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask him or her, did you ask me for your needs and your hardships and the hard times you're going through in, your, in this world? The person will say, oh Allah, of course I did. And the screen will be running in front of the person. Oh Allah, look at this. This is the dua I had made at a certain time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I know you made those dua. I know what you're going through in those sorrows and difficulties. But look at the reward I have prepared for you. When the person looks at the reward, not from a governor of a state, or a president of a country, or the king of a country, but from the king of the kings. From Akram al-Akramin, Arham al-Rahimin, Rabbul Alameen. When the person sees the reward, an everlasting reward, a reward, from the status, from the shan and the grace and the standards of the Akram al Hakimin, Akram al Akramin, Rabb al Alameen, Arham al Rahim. What kind of rewards it can be? A president gives award from his status, a king gives rewards from his status, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala imagine the rewards. When the person sees the rewards, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he or she will wish none of his or her duas were accepted in this We do not understand the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for not granting our duas in this world. We are like little children. Our intelligence, our wisdom, our knowledge is limited. Like a child when he asks for candies to give him. When he asks more and more candies to say, no, it's not good for your health. The child does not understand that. We understand. Similarly, the du'as we make, some of the du'as we do not understand the wisdom. Is it going to benefit me? Or is it going to harm me? Is it a blessing in disguise? Or is it something that's going to harm me? That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only accepts those du'as that are beneficial for us in this world. And Allah gives it to us. But those du'as for which we do not see the results, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves those du'as for the day of judgment. That is why Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it is a blank check, respected listeners. Allah is giving us a blank check in the month of Ramadan. You make dua, Allah will answer to your duas. The angels say, Amin to the duas of the fasting people in the month of Ramadan, said Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Angels say, Amin. Especially at the time of Iftar, said Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hmm? Farhadan. فرحت عند الإفطار وفرحت عند لقاء الرحمن أو كما قال. Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said two happinesses for the fasting person. One when he or she breaks the fast, he feels the happiness. At that time, Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said make du'as. At least one du'a is accepted at that time. Make as many du'as. Bring our kids together, families together. Let's make du'a. Let's spend a few minutes, few seconds before iftar, at the time of iftar. Ask Allah. It's a time of acceptance of du'as. The night time, Allah. Is there anyone, Allah says, that my throne comes close to the earth? Is there anyone who has any needs to be asked to be fulfilled? Is there anyone seeking forgiveness from me? Is there anyone seeking repentance from me? I can forgive and accept his repentance and her repentance. O oh, doer of good, come close. O oh, doer of evil, say only an angel announces it. Abdullah ibn Masood says, "Allah Taala." Ya baghi al qayyir, aqbil. Ya baghi al shar, aqsil. What a month of forgiveness! Allah's month of forgiveness, month of mercy, opening of the doors for His awesome mercy of Allah to descend. If we do not take advantage of that, if we do not exert ourselves in the Rabir, in the night time, in the daytime reciting Quran, doing vigor, lying down, Alladheena yathkuroon Allah qiyamun wa qu'udun wa ala jubihim wa yitafakkaruna fi khalqih samawati wal ard Rabbana ma khalaqta hatha batila Subhanak faqina adhaab al-nar Standing, reclining, walking, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Especially in the month of Ramadan. Don't let it go to waste, I'm telling myself. 
We do not know what we're going to see next Ramadan after this Ramadan or not. People who were there in last Ramadan, some of them are not with us. We know who they are. They can see the doors of paradise flung open. The doors of paradise flung open. The gates of hellfire shut down, closed, sealed, locked. Shayateen chain. Jannah decorated. The smell of the fasting person more dear than the smell of musk, said Prophet Sallallahu in the eyes of Allah Subhanahu is making dua. Everything, the special mercy descending, the special forgiveness of Allah. All those things, the dead people can see those. We cannot. And they would wish, they would wish. That is why Prophet Sallallahu said, if a person misses one fast in the month of Ramadan, without any valid excuse, misses one fast of Ramadan, he or she can fast their entire lives, but they will not be able to make up that one missed fast in the month of Ramadan, missing without any valid excuse. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability, give us the tawfiq to take maximum advantage of this month of Ramadan. This month of Ramadan is the month of the Quran. Why is this month of Ramadan so blessed and sacred in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed all the holy scriptures, including the Quran, in the month of Ramadan. In the month of Ramadan. Why did Allah choose the month of Ramadan? It is in His knowledge. But Allah decided this is the blessed month. The most blessed month Allah has decided. For us to take advantage. So we should recite as much Quran as possible. Imam Abu Hanifa Rahmatullah used to recite 63 Qur'ans in the month of Ramadan. One Qur'an in the daytime, one Qur'an in the nighttime. 30 days. And the three Qur'ans you finish in Taraweeh prayers. How did he get time? And that. Allah says, I'm time. Allah, can, Allah controls the time. Allah gives barakah to whomever he wants in the time. <coughs> and people have, people in Mashallah, the Pleasanton area, there are people who finish 15, 20 Qur'ans in the month of Ramadan. They do. We cannot. Majority of us, if not all of us, we cannot. But at least let's finish one Qur'an. At least we can tell Allah, Oh Allah, well, I finished one Qur'an on my own, and one Qur'an in the Tarabih. I present you two Qur'ans, O oh Allah, on the day of Jesus. Because people will come with many, many Qur'ans in the month of Ramadan finishing. Like the lady, subhanAllah, in the time of Yusuf alayhi salam. When Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam, as a young, the most beautiful human being on the face of the earth, was being auctioned in the slave markets of Egypt, a old poor woman went to bid for Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. When the kings and princes and princesses were coming to bid for him, an old poor lady went to bid for Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. And she, all she had to bid to pay for Prophet Yusuf salam, was a ball of yarn, a ball of thread in her hand, which she had woven with her own hands. A person asks him, what are you, how are you going to bid Yusuf when the kings and the princes are coming to bid for him? She said, yes, I will not be able to afford him. But on the day of judgment, when Allah will call the bearers of Yusuf, my name will be called them on. Our names, when Allah will become Imam Abu Hanifa, and when those, mashallah, blessed people in Pleasant and reciting 50, 20 Qur'ans in the month of Ramadan, respected listeners, we can go in their lines and say, Oh Allah, this is one Qur'an I have, and one in Tarawiyah. Like a bird, it's written in the books, when Prophet Ibrahim was throwing a tremendous fire prepared by the moon, a bird would take water, little water in its beak, go above the fire, drop the droplets of water on the fire. 
The other birds ask, what benefit is it going to do dropping these little droplets of water on a tremendous, humongous fire? The bird replied, well, Ibrahim is the Khalil of Allah. <coughs> Ibrahim is the friend of Allah. It is only the right of the friend of Allah for me to do something for him. Let us do something in this month of Ramadan, respected listeners. Fulfill the rights of the month of Ramadan. A tremendous, most special, precious guest is coming our way. To give us the open up the floodgates of gifts for us. If you do not give anything back to that guest, the guest will come and guests will go. Our life will go on. Just one month, respected listeners. Eleven months we live with our desires. One month we give it to Allah. Exert, do your work. Our household chores, job, family responsibilities. Along with that, exert ourselves. Sleep little. We sleep little in the month of Ramadan. Allah will make us sleep well in the grave. That is guaranteed. Staying up in the night, especially in weekend nights, rather than winding our time away in gossip or socializing, your wife's predecessors will not talk to anyone. Just go read Quran, open up the Quran. Continue from Salat to Salat, Salat to Salat, till Fajr time. Take minimum rest, minimum break, even the control time of the eating to spend time reciting the Quran. May Allah give us the understanding. <laughs> عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالأدب والإحسان والإيتاء بالقربى وإنها الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يأذن بالله تذكرون واذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تذكرون أقل السلام